to venture out on this rather um, horrible morning. Um, get rather busy. But I've got a piece of coffee, so um, not too concerned. Um, I'm going to try and paint this uh, lovely old scene that you see behind me. A lot of people say to me, um, it's winter, uh, everything's grey and dull. Well, it is, but if you look closely, there is lots of colour. So I want to show you how to deal with this. Plein air, out here in, in all, the, all the conditions. Um, and um, try and encourage some of you to actually um, uh, go outside and paint. And I want to show you how you can add colour to what probably a lot of people would class as a rather um, uninteresting uh, To me, um, if we look across, we can see the trees. Um, we can also see the lovely uh, ivy-clad tree on the right. Um, so, um, as I say, I'm going to have a quick coffee before I uh, attempt this, which uh, uh, will help to warm me up. Uh, and then I shall crack on and see how far we get. Okay, well there is the uh, the drawing, um, all ready down, and uh, I'm now going to proceed and lay some colour down. Okay, well I'm going to start purely with uh, a base colour. Now as I said, although it's dull and grey, which we, we will need to show, um, but it is also extremely um, colourful if you look very, very closely. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is put a... I mean, this is a sort of subject where uh, with Henry Wesson used to call it bags of damn all, really. But in other words, there's very little to paint. Uh, and yet, you've got to make an interest. Now, I'm not even going to damp the paint because it's misly. I mean, it's not raining, but it's misly, so it damp. Um, and I'm going to um, mix burnt sienna. I want to keep the colours fairly rich. Um, so there's burnt sienna with a touch of raw sienna. And I'm going to just, that's to start the sky. That, there we are. So immediately we've got colour. You know, it's going to be grey, but immediately we've got colour. Then I'm going to introduce a little bit of cadmium red. Because I need, you know, we need some warmth in this painting. We're desperate, desperate for warmth. Um, and reds, yellows, um, all help the warmth. And I'm even going to put a bit of yellow in there, a bit of cadmium yellow in the foreground. A nice bit of yellow. There we go, a bit of blue in there as well. A bit of yellow. Just bang that across there. Right, you know, we, we've, we've got a bit of colour there. Right, now I'm going to introduce a little bit of burnt umber with ultramarine blue. And that will give me my grey for the sky. Um, it's a, it's quite a warm grey. It's not a cold grey. Well, even if it is, um, so uh, I would make it so I've added a little bit of cadmium in there. See how warm that grey is. Um, we're going to have light coming from the right hand side where that tree is. So that needs to, doesn't need to be too, too dark. There we go. I'm going to go really dark now with a couple of patches. I want to show off the fact that it is quite um, a uh, dark, moody day. So there's a bit more colour there. Blue in that. There you go. So a bit of colour there, but and a little bit more colour into the distance in places. There we go. Look at that. See the words flowing? Lovely. I'm going to leave that area at the, um, on the right hand side. Now in the distance, there'll be a streak of warm tone in the field. And that streak of warm tone is burnt sienna. Wipe that across the field. That's the distant field. See how 
very damp it is. See how it's all very, it's running. It's, um, it's one of those measly days. Now I'm going to do some of those blue beans. So I'm using Prussian blue and cadmium yellow for the field. I seem to do some bit more echo. Wood yellow in that green. There we are. Look at that. Lovely. Go. And then finally the foreground. red in the sky. Now that needs to be allowed to completely dry and then I can move forward, well not completely dry but at least uh, dry off just a touch. So in the meantime I'm going to have another cup of coffee. Okay well we're back again I've just given that time to uh, dry and uh, I'll just show you the scene again um, purely uh, that tree really that's the dominant feature um, and um, at the moment I've just purely laid in the very basic colors um, and I say color because this video is all about adding color to what a lot of people class a rather dull winter landscape. Um, so I'm going to now continue. I allowed that to, to dry to a certain extent, although I would say um, it's um, far from dry. Um, but it is dry to a certain extent, as I say. Okay, let's try and get some uh, progress now on this one. Um, I'm taking a couple of smaller brushes now to try and paint in um, a little bit of background, a little bit of that distance in the background. Because um, what you normally do with this sort of subject, you, you get the, the composition, we're going to have the large tree there, the smaller hedging, and some hedges in the background and that is all this subject is about. The main thing is that you, you add colour to the subject. Now I'm going to paint in, there is a field there but beyond the field there is just some touches of uh, hedging and uh, quite simply um, I'm going to try and add colour so it's plenty of browns, um, got to be a bit muted in the background, I uh, don't want the, these um, these browns to be too strong but I'm going to use burnt sienna with a touch of ultramarine um, but basically with a fairly dry brush um, in what I mean by dry is that um, it's not um, completely loaded with paint um, got a bit of colour there particularly along that edge there um, that's the edge of the field bit of a job to see but there we are it's still a little damp that's nice so that's the edge of the field right and because it's damp we're going to get some nice um, uh, sort of uh, softness to this background which is what we're looking for and a little bit of hedging I've gone in a little bluer with that um, always a good thing to do some of the hedging is quite uh, dense some is quite open and see all I'm doing is just dropping in some little touches like that really and I'm going to go particularly dark with one area there so just to attract the eye okay so that's our distance gone in uh, we're going to leave the field as it is we're going to pull a little bit of that warm distance across the back there I don't 
don't like to leave gaps um, where um, add a little bit of colour to that uh, where possibly you could end up with um, um, with white paper behind the tree where there's gaps behind the tree. This side I'm going to continue that through and just lose that. Uh, I don't know whether any of it will show beyond that, but there we are. Just pull that away. So that's the distance. Now we've got the middle distance. So this is where we need um, stronger colour, in other words, richer, um, a bit more vibrancy in the colour. Um, and a little bit of green as well, you know, there is some green in there. So I'm going to add cadmium yellow to burnt sienna with a touch of Prussian. Um, just to give it that nice green, it's a, well it's only a dull green, but it's quite dark. And because the paper's damp, I've got to go fairly strong with this, with the colour. And I'm just pulling down with a brush, there we go, just to pick up. Of, a bit of hedging there. It's a small shrub, really. Going to add a bit more yellow to that just to try and maintain a little bit of um, sense of shrubbery there. Um, and partic particularly dark one side. There you go. Look at that. Almost Prussian blue. <laughs> Lovely. Because I'm going to have the sun coming, or the, the light, there's no sun, but a little bit of light coming from the right. That's good. Now, we're now going lighter either side of that. We don't want to, we're not sticking with a dark theme right the way through. To be very careful uh, that you don't go too dark right the way through. You've got to have certain light areas, and these light areas are there. Area and that's another one there. See, let's blend that a little bit more and one or two little darker touches there. That's lovely. So that's that. And um, now we go burnt sienna with a touch of ultramarine yellow in there to create uh, a small hedge running at the base of it. and um, we need to have dark brown touches probably burnt umber and um, silver was there there we go and that little bit of hedging along the edge of that field and that goes behind that tree uh, just pull that away like that there we go ok now we're going to deal with the hedge on the left hand side. If you remember there's a hedge running down there. I'm going to start off in the foreground with some sort of darker uh, browns. I can see browns, I can also see touches of green in that. And see where there's a bit of white paper? I'm going to leave that. I like the look of that. Touches of green. See the crispness on, on that? I'm going to run that out of picture. I don't want that to interfere with the foreground at all. Uh, the eye running into the foreground. So take that right out of picture. That's it. And then as we go along, it gets somewhat smaller, that hedging, and uh, less intense in colour. So not as many of those yellows in there. And also, um, quite open. There's a bit of top to that as if there's a, and I'm going to leave a small there is a little gap between that hedge and that edge for the eye to wander into the distance other than that that's how you paint a winter hedge now this side there is another shrub a small tree burnt umber and I'm use the point of this brush now just to paint a little bit of small trunk work, not a great deal to that, not going to put a great deal of this this in, but see the way it's broken and, and quite, um, quite open, a little bit more to the trunk but not a great deal, and just simply 
put in a little bit of light top of that. See the way I'm just stroking a damp brush down and the light from the sky is coming through. Just hang that out over there. There we go. So you've got that, that, that although you've got a dull day, you've got light in your subject. Okay, now let's paint this uh, lovely ivy clad tree there. And that's quite simply using Prussian blue, um, cadmium yellow to get that lovely sort of a bit of brown, bit of burnt umber. Get that lovely sort of um, ivy green, that's what I call it. Um, so it's uh, quite dark. Don't go too dark too early, so let's just be careful with this. Now we start off in the lower area. Brush has still got a lot of paint to it, but I think we can get away with that. Um, and that sits just below the grass area there. Just remove a little bit of colour, that's better. Because we need it to open and break out a little. Because these ivy areas do have quite a bit of light on them sometimes when, when, when uh, you've got a bit of light I mean not necessarily sunlight but um, it's quite dense dense area and the ivy runs up the branches so that's always interesting anyway let's go up and follow that ivy right the way up like that it will all be revealed when we come to um, painting the um, there's another clump there that's it when we paint the trunk area so that's the ivy area uh, of the main tree um, and then of course we need to put in um, the uh, trunk. Well, use a smaller brush for this. Now there is quite a dark trunk to that. I'm going to use those same two colours, but use so it's Prussian with burnt umber. Now, although they were light, I'm actually going to paint uh, um, paint them dark um, because, quite simply, it's um, the easiest thing to do. Um, to be fair. As you go away and up the tree, uh, some small branches just tucking out, and the ivy clads these branches. So you leave gaps, then you bring the ivy, the the trunk work out beyond that. See, so there's probably a trunk there or area there. Uh, sorry, I don't know whether you can see all that. And then you bring out the, tr the branches beyond those ivy areas. And as the brush loses a bit of paint, it does benefit because you get the, the lovely freedom and movement of the brush. The point of the brush creates those branch like uh, shapes. branch a bit thicker and then of course there's branches coming away here and just have a bit of fun with these branches don't add too many just keep dotting around here and there uh, see the way I'm you know if you look at it there's branches spiking out we, we're given an impression that's all we're doing we're not painting every single branch here and indeed um, wouldn't wish to um, but um, there's lots of spiky pieces coming out of the bottom there as well as a, the other branch or two and it actually comes right the way across and more or less frames the the outside of that uh, or the, the distance can you see now the benefit of having that lovely selection uh, so that you've got a bit of strength to that 
that's good. Now I'm going in with burnt sienna to give it a bit of warmth. Um, clean the brush, okay? There we go. A little bit of burnt sienna now, just to give it a bit of warmth in this lower area. There's lots of spiky things going on, but it's lovely and warm. Um, nice warm colour along that base there. Um, and that sort of helps embellish where the edge of that grass is. See the way I'm helping that um, along there? That's it. And of course that will gradually run out of picture so we'll be less intense but we'll also introduce that there and a little bit of that there. And this same colour will be used to indicate smaller branches that we can't paint in with our brush because they're just too small. So all we do, same technique, drag across the paper with this colour until we get to a point where we say enough is enough really because you can add too much to that good now we look at the real the slightly smaller textured pieces particularly in the foreground where there is still some greenery you know uh, here there's a bit of texture and I love playing around with these uh, with these um, spiky areas and tufts of grass. You really do need to um, uh, to make certain that that uh, the brush is not too loaded, but you can introduce colours, uh, spiky areas. There we go, just like that. And of course, then this can also run along there, just to create texture. It's all about texture, I suppose, in, in, in many ways. Uh, and see where that red I put in earlier is underneath that green, that, you know, red and greens, lovely colours. Um, they do work well together. Now the foreground, well, we've got, um, we want to keep that fairly simply simply treated but there is sort of um, a, a track area that I just want to to show where there's just a little bit of that um, uh, it's, it's like a um, I suppose in many ways it's, a, it's part of the ploughed field really um, but I just want to show that as, as a lighter textured feel. That's it. There we go. Get some shadow on that later. That's good. Um, brilliant. See how I've really made a subject from virtually nothing really. And all that's really left is the use of real dark areas um, which um, is uh, Prussian blue and burnt umber. Really, really dark areas. Um, there may be a dark area just there, just one or two little spiky areas there. Because without darks, you don't see the lights. And that is the most fundamental thing when you come to you've got to have lights, you've got to have medium, and then you have these really dark tones. Like the ivy just scratching across the paper. See the way it's really beginning to bring that to life now. There we go. That's good. Now these dark browns, there's actually some leafing that's left on the tips of these branches. So it's still not yet completely lost its leafing. And I'm going to show that or indicate that by purely putting in some dark touches like that. There we go. Just got to be very careful now that we don't overdo this. Um, going to put in uh, a bit of fencing here. Perhaps there's a bit of fence. I can't see a fence, but 
always nice to uh, put that in. Um, then we look at shadow, and um, that is how you get enjoyment from painting this sort of subject. I mean, it's a lovely, lovely subject. Uh, for the shadow, I'm going to use the cadmium red mixed with a bit of ultramarine. Uh, it gives us that purpley, dull purpley colour again. Uh, it's, it's a traditional one that I use quite often. Um, and uh, as always, it gives us that, um, that sort of dull purpley colour. Just going to find a decent part of the colour. give us that um, lovely sort of shadow effect and the tree will cast a shadow in the foreground. Um, or albeit we've not got any sun, I can you know I can hear you say well where's the sun? Well that is correct but there is a muted light that we need to show uh, because unless you do that you've not got any uh, any real substance to the picture, you know. So um, I'm going to bring in some darker stuff this side, just so as that holds that side in. Too much and kill the colour, and that, apart from some little touches of there again, really dark colour, which is always very important in the foreground here. Just a little bit of interest that um, we need running along this edge of the track within the shadow area. We don't need to do too much to this, otherwise we're overdoing it. And um, we just soften one or two of those pieces too, with a bit of damp colour. There we go. Just so as we don't, uh, so as they sit on the ground. And then all we need to do, as I always say, is to, uh, we're going to sign this, so let's sign it uh, down at this point. Bit of a job to uh, to see. Gives it a nice surround. There we are. So there we are. That's a simple little study produced in somewhere around 30 odd minutes. Um, and the scene itself is let's just move the camera up and Way. there we go so that's the scene and uh, lovely composition uh, a lot of people say you know what can we do with that rather dull looking sort of um, subject this morning well that's what you can do with it quite simply treat it as a 
colourful, lovely looking scene that, um, to be fair, um, has been well worth the effort coming outside and painting. It will be on my YouTube channel uh, very shortly. Um, and if you're watching that through YouTube, then please subscribe uh, because I tend to paint on a regular basis uh, and most of them, of them are plein air paintings uh, but I also work in the studio on, on demonstrations. Thank you very much for watching.